Hi everyone, it's Lori and welcome to the channel. Today I'm in my studio working on these gorgeous tulip flowers and I thought I'd bring you along. I'm wanting to add some blur to the background. So in this video, I'm gonna show you three ways to add blur. The first part of the video is a pretty long way to add blur, but it works great. So stay tuned for the last half where we'll go through two quick and easy examples using tools in Photoshop. Let's jump in together. Okay, so I've got an image up today that I thought we would work on, and I want to show you a couple different ways that you could blur the image. Now, I shot this image and it had these tulips surrounding this beautiful center. What I want to do is add a little blur to de-emphasize the four tulips and really bring out the details in my center one. All right, so to get started, I'm going to duplicate my background. Now you could do this first technique in Lightroom Classic, Lightroom, or you could do it through Photoshop and Adobe Camera Raw. So I'm gonna go up to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. So remember, Camera Raw is just like using Lightroom. It's just a function that works through Photoshop so that you don't have to go out to Lightroom and back in. So the first example is using tools that you would find in the standard Lightroom. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and do a little color adjustment. I'm also under light. I'm going to just bring down the highlights a little bit and open up the shadows a little bit. Okay, so to blur this area, we're going to use the new lens blur tool. So lens blur will be at the bottom of your menu no matter which program you're using. Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, or Adobe Camera Raw. The first thing you're gonna do is click Apply. Now, many of you may have already seen my videos using this tool, and maybe you've also already used it, but what I wanna do is just um, show you a trick with it that's really important. So you can see the arrow here, Processing. If you're in Lightroom, you'll get that on your image. And then once it's done, we'll be able to increase the blur amount. So it's almost finished. Here we go, let's count down. And once it's done, we can see that blur. There we go. So now what we're gonna do is just pump that blur up. I like to take it pretty high so that I can see what it's doing to my image. And you also have some boost options related to bokeh. I'm not gonna worry with that right now. I just wanna focus on the blur. Now, if I go in and turn this off and back on, I'm not seeing a huge impact in my image. I'm seeing the background, but not all of these tulips. So let me show you the reason why. Why? Here is where we can visualize our depth map. So the depth map is gonna let you see where it's focusing the focus areas. And right now I have it selected as the subject. Now we can scroll this over and it's going to give us a different view and a different focus area for our blur. So let's take, let's put it there in the middle and turn off the visual depth. So now our background's not as blurry, but our foreground's a little fuzzy and we're not wanting that either. So I'm just gonna move this back where it was, but I wanna show you a trick that I would use in this situation. And that is I would switch from subject focus to a point area focus. Okay, so let's turn off the depth map and let's go ahead and select the target tool. And now we're going to click and drag that over our main tulip. This is going to be what we want used as our focus area. So now you can see that has moved our depth map over and we can then see that blur. Now it didn't change it a whole lot, but we can use these sliders and really refine it to just that kind of center point and scroll that over a little bit. So we're just tweaking and modifying. It's hard to see with all these colors, so I, I understand that. Um, let's take the visual depth map off so now our subject is blurry. So let's bring it over. There's our subject in focus. So for this particular instance, we're gonna have a hard time getting all the blur that I want. I'm seeing a lot more than I did before by using that target tool and by narrowing this focus area. 
So I've really got it pinpointed right to my subject. Now what we can do to refine it is we can use this refine button. It's over here, it's kind of hard to see. What I wanna do is add some extra blur and I'm gonna bump it up pretty high and I want it to still be about 50% feather and I want the flow to be really high so that we can do it pretty quick and easy. So I am just gonna start brushing on the blur, especially around the bottom of this image because I don't want that to be distracting to the eye. So there we go, getting a little bit better effect. I'm just gonna come in, add some more of that blur, and then I'm gonna come up and blur this tulip just a little bit more. So we're just gonna come in and give that a little boost. Now, what I have found with using this lens blur tool is, or this, um, well, it is lens blur, this, this blur tool, is that it's not blurring as much as some of the tools in Photoshop. So you can see it's, it's doing an okay job. I'm going to make my brush size smaller. And it's a good option if you only use Lightroom and if you've got a pretty simple blur where you're just trying to blur a background. So it, it, does, it does a pretty good job. I wanna come in and blur this area just a little bit more. So we're just going over it with the brush and I think that's pretty good. So the tips that I would suggest is one, be sure you click the visual depth map so you can see. So if you look right now, you can see where I have blurred out parts of the image on the depth map and also where our target is. Then we went in and refined it. So I think that's critical when you have multiple subjects in your image. We just want to make sure that our main subject stays really sharp. Now we could also go to the focus brush and come in and just make sure that our subject tulip is really still clear, beautiful, and sharp. So you can always go over it if you're concerned that it got a little bit of that blur on it. So I'm just going to go over that. Okay, so that is one way. Now that took some extra steps. And the main reason I wanted to use this example is because when you have something with multiple pieces in it, the system is not going to pick up that there is just one single subject. You're going to have to use these tools to refine it. Okay, let's go ahead and click OK. And it's going to take us back to Photoshop. So that was our first example. Now that took a little bit of time, but in order to get it the way we really wanted it, that is what we needed to do. Now I'm gonna hide that example and I'm gonna duplicate our background layer again and we're going to do a different method really quick here in Photoshop. So stay, stay still, pause if you need to and um, let's go through a couple more options. So next is going to be select subject. So I wanna do a select subject and let Photoshop determine the subject and hopefully it picks our main tulip here. So we're going to give this a try together. Okay, it added this bottom one. So all we have to do is go up to the quick selection tool, grab the minus brush. I'm going to use the bracket key to make the brush small, bigger and I'm just going to remove that tulip. Now I probably want the stem so I'm going to go ahead and add the plus sign and bring that stem back. So sometimes that happens, and let's move this menu out of the way. So let's just come down with the plus sign. And we're gonna try to just get that stem, and get that all cleaned up. Okay, otherwise I think we got a great selection. So now with our selection, what we need to do is invert it. So I'm going to go up to the select. We've already selected subject, but it went away. Let's see if we can do the invert. And there's our marching ants. So when you have marching ants around the outside of your image, now we can do things to the image and not impact our subject. So what I'm going to do is go up to filter blur. And what I wanna first do is add a little motion blur. All right, so with the motion blur, you can decide the direction of it. 
So I just want to add that little touch of creativity and blur. Let's just maybe make it about right there. You just have to kind of guess where you want it. So the beauty is we're not impacting our subject at all because we have it masked. Let's click OK. And that's going to be my first option here in Photoshop. Command D. So now we have this version. That was a lot faster, I think, than the lens blur. And there's the lens blur. I also like the effect personally a little bit better. Now, again, if you only use Lightroom, I encourage you to try Adobe Camera Raw. But just remember that the new tool in Lightroom is new. I am positive it's going to get better and better. So that was our second option. OK, so stay with me. Let's do one more together. I want to make sure you get three different ways to add a blur. So this example, if you don't like to do selections, we're just going to go up to Filter, Blur. And for this one, let's just do a Gaussian Blur and a standard blur. Again, we're going to modify the amount. And I think that looks pretty nice at about 30%. Now what we're going to have to do is bring, apply a mask. So we'll come down, apply the mask, flip it to black because black will reveal the image underneath. We're going to grab our brush. Make sure your brush is a soft brush. And for opacity, I would encourage you to start 50, 60 percent just to start with. I like to use a very large brush and I'm just going to come in and bring back our subject flower. Now, if you want, you can then flip it to white and at a very low opacity, maybe 20%, we'll make our brush smaller. You can come in and just add a little softness to the edges so that the image really blends with the scene. All right, so that's a way to do a blur using Gaussian Blur really fast and you just have to apply a mask. So this was our mask option. You can see before and after. This was our selection option with some motion blur, but you could use that technique with any blur. And this was using the lens blur in Lightroom. So I hope these three blur ideas gave you some ideas for your images and also showed you some watch outs. I hope you'll take a minute to like, subscribe, that helps me continue making these videos and send me any comments on your favorite blur tool. Thanks so much.